Thank you, folks. There's more. There's more. Um, wow, what a treat. Um, uh, Please, um, let's start by uh, welcoming back the director of the film, Finn. Please come back. Finn Taylor, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Next, I'm going to invite up a woman who I give all thanks for all this happening, but uh, um, has been really handling every detail of this since day one, um, Janine Thomas, the producer Woo. of the film. And Finn, I forgot to note, is also the writer of the film, that should uh, be noted. Um, we have here um, the woman who played Ruth, the therapist, um, Robin Weigert. Robin, where are you? Thank you so much. Young Herbert himself, Luke Blum. Thank you, Luke. Um, Jenny, welcome back. Jenny, the, the compo composer, Jenny Scheinman. And then I understand we have uh, two of Herbert's grandchildren here. Brandon. Brandon is one of them. I, I don't know their name, so uh, call them out. Is Ryan here? He's in the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't know when the movie ends. <laughs> Um, thank you, thank you so much, all of you, for being here, for sharing this with us, for being a part of this, and uh, for such a such a moving film. Um, I have to know. I have a lot of questions, but then I want to open it to questions from the audience. Um, I, I want to know where this all started. Janine. Um, yeah, I met Herbert in 2014, and just spent a lot of time with him and hearing his story and. I have to believe he loved being able to tell me his story because I wasn't part of his family. Um, he often talked about how he didn't want his own children to look at him differently. Um, so I really enjoyed listening and I think he really enjoyed having somebody to listen to him. So um, I saw him and set up um, times for him to talk at different schools and from that in around 2016, I'm like, this really needs to be a film. And um, soon after, we found Finn and made magic happen. <laughs> yeah. Finn, can you take it from there and tell a little bit about the process of turning a man's life into a film? Uh, Finn. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, well. Hello, can you hear me? I, I was hired by Janine to write the script, um, and it was her vision, which I think was a very strong one, because he had affected so many teens' lives, to not only have his incredible story of escape um, and survival, but to include the story of how he affected these children. The very first time Herbert did speak publicly, a girl came up, she'd already written the suicide note, she was planning to end her life, and then she spoke to him. And this happened repeatedly, children who were cutting themselves, children who were um, going through a lot of emotional pain. And uh, you could see that girl on the street at the end, he was just being shot downtown in San Rafael and this woman randomly stopped by and this, this was a very common thing with Herbert. So I thought that was a, a unique and interesting story and as many of you probably already know, the idea of keeping it a secret is not really a rare one amongst survivors, but that was also, <clears throat> you know, compelling. And then, you know, after interviewing Herbert and his family for years, Janine flew us to Auschwitz, and, um, you know, we, we got help from uh, Michael Birnbaum, uh, used to be head of the show, uh, he helped us with the script. Um, and then when it came time to get a director, Janine generously asked me to direct the film. And, um, Unfortunately, Herbert passed away shortly before we made it, but um, I had the honor of getting to know him and his family for several years. I should also say, uh, we are going to, we have rented a room around the corner to watch the debate. If anybody wants to come with us at the end, we have plenty of time. We, we, we have a quick break from having to think about politics. I know, I know. Sorry, I just had to say <laughs> Um, Luke, let me ask you, tell us a little bit about, so, um, I mean, what's amazing, one of the things about this film is like, you know, it takes place in these two different, very different times, um, yet there's such a strong connection made between, uh, between the characters. Um, what, tell us a little bit about the production of the past that you were in. Yeah. 
Yeah, so um, that part was filmed in Prague, which was the first time that I'd ever been out of the country and only time. And uh, it's incredible. Everybody there was amazing. Finn is an incredible director. He's great. And the whole, all of filming it, everybody was super involved and very into it. They all cared a lot about the end product. They cared about Herbert and they just really wanted to make this a wonderful movie, which it was. How long did you shoot in Prague? We were shooting for like about six weeks, I think, in Prague. It was actually a little shorter, but it always amazes me when I watch the film and you see the chubby-faced boy playing soccer, and then you see the lean uh, Clint Eastwood guy burning the number off his arm, and it's the same guy within three weeks, you know. Uh, he was 12 years old during the entire time, even though he portrayed Herbert from 12 to 15. Um, that amazed me. And let me just ask Luke one more question about this. Why was it important for you to make a film like this? Well, um, this is this was one of my favorite things to film. It's a true story, which is those are always the best things. And in doing research for this, after I got the job, and even before the audition, I watched interviews of Herbert to get his accent and just to know him. And he's such an incredible person whom I admire a lot after all the time I spent studying him. So by the time that we actually started filming, I was super ready to portray him and just, I was just so happy to be making something as important as this. Thank you. Um, Robin, can I ask you, you're gonna represent the American side of the shoot. Um, tell us a little bit about, uh, about that side of the production, how you got involved and well, um, where you did it. B before I answer your question, I just, this is my first time seeing the film and actually my first time meeting Luke and I, I just, I, I thought your work was so tremendous in this and I'm so excited Thank you. to meet you. Um, I just like, um, you know, it's, I, I this is, this is full of emotion, but I, I feel like it's it's a tough time for your generation and and seeing what you were able to bring, how much um, of yourself, your heart to this uh, gave me a lot of courage actually to see your, your work. You were Thank really, you. really beautiful. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's just <laughs> it's very heartfelt. So I'm supposed to speak to the American side of things. Well, <laughs> I don't know. How, how did you get um, involved with the the production yeah. and um, and? Um, gosh, there's a, there, I mean, there's another very good young actor in this, isn't there? Um, she was not Elsie. here to represent herself, but um, yeah, she was she was tremendous, and um, I just think everybody <laughs> dropped into this with such a a good. Um, hearted uh, a good uh, a good feeling for, for 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 the man who who I didn't know but but for um this I, I what I want to say is is this choice this choice to live uh the, the 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 centerpiece of this which is very Victor Frankl isn't it it's very the you know the power of response is something we all have um and um and I don't think it's an apolitical film even though it's an apolitical film because this is at base, you know, what what we must all do <laughs> is choose life. Um, and uh, I think you did a beautiful job. <laughs> oh, thank you. And I, can I say, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I was a perpetual student on this film. Uh, Robin and Steven are two actors I would be big fan of for years. I've been in the business for 30 years. And, you know, uh, people think about movie stars, but for me or many directors, there are actors like Robin that you just watch over the years, hoping you get a chance to work with them. And she brought so much depth and backstory to every moment in the film. And not every moment made it in, but it was there in the character. And it was, it, it, she, you, you have some personal familial um, experience uh, with this period of time, but she made so many suggestions that just, and, and we improvised things that just made that whole thing's so much more important. And I knew with Robin's character and Elsie's and Stevens in this room, 
if you see the first interview with Herbert online, he looks terrified. And capturing that transition, it was critical to have an actor like Robin and, and Stephen doing it. It was just, uh, I just tried to get out of the way and point the camera. <laughs> No, you were a beautiful director. So, I mean, it, it was just an experience of doing something that felt like it had um, uh, enough meaning and significance <laughs> that that it that it all sort of better work, you know, <laughs> better work. Um, yeah. And um, uh, it's funny this year, um, you know, I had done a, a, a series for Hulu called "We Were the Lucky Ones," um, and uh, it's just it, it's it's been a wild. Ride I, 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 that this would be coming out sort of uh, shortly after that aired, um, because I ha I hadn't mined my own um, history and actually the people in my own family who who had died in camps were were are, are I don't even know who their names you don't know, know who they were I just sort of know it as a kind of layered experience of uh, various you know generations worth of sort of emotional complexity let's just say. But um, I love the way it seemed through here from generation to generation. And I can, I can well imagine that this man's courage would affect um, the kids he speaks to very deeply. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to work my way down here. And uh, Jenny, tell us a little bit about the, thank you. First of all, this performance was beautiful. A round, another round of applause. <laughs> I've, I've been running the film program here for 20 years, and I don't think we've ever done that, and I love it. I, I'm not going to request that for every, uh, every screening. We're going to have uh, somebody perform at the end. Um, you've set a new bar. First. Does, um, does this work? Does this work? Yeah. Does this work? This works. Um, yeah, that was an experiment. I wish I could have seen it. Um, Finn and I have a great... Um, collaborative history of making stuff together. And this was an idea we came up with pretty recently. And um, it was pretty cool. I, I suddenly started hearing all the birds in the, tr in the forest at that moment. And um, to be able to respond to the score there was really fun. Um, improvise along with it. Um, in terms of the making this, um, I have to confess that I said no at first. I thought it would be too much for me. Um, to come in there and, you know, a score is really digging into the feeling and the um, subconscious of the characters and I couldn't, didn't think I could handle it. And then I, um, Finn gave me a little time and I came back to it and it was really quite um, an intense and um, uh, meaningful experience. I think that the maybe if I could... There's two things I, I feel like I was really using in the script. One was the character Victor Ullman, who's the composer, who was a real composer, whose uh, music I explored a lot in researching, um, you know, in thinking about what I would write for this. Um, imagining him at Terezin, along with his fellow musicians and composers, um, reading a lot of what he wrote about... Um, uh, one of the things, he was a Schoenberg guy, and one of the things he really relied on was the form of music, the stability and the structure of music. And at moments where, uh, you know, as, as, as Herbert says in the film, he, he has a ringside seat to the end of the world. He's relying on these structures and music to kind of get him through. So that was one thing. He was a really powerful um, uh, thinker and wonderful musician. So there was that guy. There was also the, the father's complicated relationship with magic and denial and um, holding on to something uh, somewhat ephemeral to give hope to his kids. Um, and that is something that's related to music, the magic of music and the, the magic of, of why mu music makes you feel the way it does and um, related to the circus. So those were sort of two, two anchor ideas, I guess, that helped me write it. Um, and I wrote it all very, very, I mean, I worked with Finn through the, through the script writing process and um, we're, we've worked together and we're friends. So. 
I knew about it, but did the whole thing in about a week. Um, I have to tell, can I tell one silly anecdote? Sure. <laughs> I saw this one other time, which was in, in Mill Valley Film Festival, the West Coast premiere, and I brought my kids, and my son looks, looks a lot like Luke. And um, after the film, people kept coming up. I don't know if I ever told you this. People kept coming up to him and saying, marvelous job, <laughs> marvelous job. <laughs> and he would say, Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> it was really an honor, you know. <laughs> so anyway, that, uh, that was a fun experience. But it also reminded me in a deeper way of how um, it's a family story. And, and I saw my son in you in the film. And that was probably why I said no at first and also probably why it was such uh, a deeply... Um, satisfying experience to work on it. Thank you. Thank you. We finally get to the grandchildren. Sorry, thank you for your patience, first thank of all. Thank you. I, I have to say that last scene in the film of bringing him in, like the whole movie I'm watching, I'm like, like this is a strange accent. <laughs> and then I realized this whole time, they, like, like he was doing the voice perfectly. Um, what is it like for you, first of all, for this story to be told, um, for the representation of your grandfather um, to be done, obviously, in a fictionalized way, but uh, to, be, to be telling this story in this way? Um, uh, tell us a little bit on your reactions and how you feel about this. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's an amazing story that, um, you know, I think needs to be told um, and people need to hear it. Um, I've been fortunate to see the film now, I think, three times, and, you know, there's still those moments in the film that, you know, push me over the edge a little bit. Um, seeing my grandfather push Abby in the stroller, um, you know, that was me for the first 10 years of my life, um, spending time at his store and just getting to, you know, spend every moment with him. Uh, the chocolate bars was another scene where <laughs> every time I saw my grandfather, I would leave... Uh, with, with chocolate in my hands. So, um, you know, it's just special memories and um, something we can pass on to our kids and his story can live on forever. It's a song. Okay. Um, yeah, I would just add that I really think um, they captured who he was so well, his essence, his mannerisms, his accent, even the minor things in the movie. Uh, that's just who he was. But he was also just such a generous person. Um, he was always there for other people, and I think the movie just did a great job of depicting that um, and really capturing just how great of a person he was. So, again, great job, and uh, especially Luke. Thank can you. I, can I say one little thing? After we made the movie, this is just a few weeks ago, their family, it wasn't you guys, it was on the West Coast, showed me a picture of Carell, the father, in a tux, a top hat, doing a magic trick. If I, I wish I had, I would have put it in the film, but it was like, wow, he really, really was into magic. And it was kind of, anyway. All right, I have one more question, then we're going to take questions from the audience. And this is to all of you, any of you who want to answer. Um, one of the things I love about this film is, is that it's not just the, I said this at the beginning, it's not just the past, it's the present as well. Why is it important to tell this story now? Are you asking me? I'm asking anyone who wants to be brave enough to jump in. Um, I think the timing on this, even though it was started, you know, 10 years ago, it's coming out at the appropriate time. And what I say to anyone who will listen is, we have to heal the past and the present to have a future. And I think this film captures that, so. I agree, I think, uh, you know, never again is now. Um, and the more people that can see the story and, you know, know what my grandfather experienced and all the pain and suffering that he went through and his family and, you know, the six million other Jews, I, I just think it's very important in today's age. Yeah, and um, me being a kid, I cannot speak about being a kid. Um, there's a, it's a very weird time in everything in the world. And growing up in such a weird environment can, is, is a lot for a kid. Um, I've been lucky to have very good parents and growing up doing movies, I feel like I'm mature-ish. <laughs> but um, 
there's a lot of people who don't know about anything about the Holocaust or anything just related to, you know, like good morals or like bad things that have happened. And like you said, um, you need to learn about the past, the mistakes of the past to make your way into the future. And that's especially important for the children who will be running the future soon. He's actually 45. <laughs> he just looks younger. <laughs> All right, I've seen I've seen a lot of hands go up already. Um, uh, so I know you're anxious to ask. We're gonna take um, Julia. We'll take one one here, one there, and then one there, if that's okay. We're bringing the microphone around. Hold on. Thank you so much. Can you tell us a, more about the HH 1945 on the column, please? Well, well, um, he, this is something I have to admit. We, we, I don't know that Herbert actually did that. When we we actually shot in Terezin, so the Terezin scenes are actually in Terezin, and when you go into some of the cells, you see that exact thing at the height of a child or a young person or a very small person. And we were looking for a way to connect the teenage Abby to the teenage Herbert. You know, she knows the adult one. And since I had seen that sort of everywhere at the camp, I thought, this makes sense. And um, so it was something trying to get at the heart of it and using things we learned in going to the camps firsthand. Right there. I just want to first of all say I was so moved by the whole evening and the film and I really hope it gets as much attention on a broader scale as your grandfather did as one individual and hopefully we can all make that happen. I just think it's such a powerful, beautiful story. Um, but I wanted to ask you both, did your grandfather really keep this a secret? Did no one know that he was in the camps? I just don't even see how that was possible. And then once his children and everyone close to him found out, what was their reaction? So I think he did keep it a secret for a long time, um, based on what my mom used to tell me. By the time we were growing up and you know we were I guess old enough to kind of understand the magnitude of what happened. He was already starting to tell his story, so we weren't really there when he was keeping it secretive. But he wasn't really opening up about it regularly. It wasn't until I was in high school that I think he decided to go and speak to a broader audience um, for the first time. And then from there, it really took off. He got more comfortable with it, and he really started to share his story. I mean, he spent so many years almost every single week going to different schools throughout Northern California. Um, and he really did, I think, uh, get accustomed to telling the story and feeling more comfortable with it and really connecting with a lot of the kids who would share their stories with him. He used to show me stacks of letters that kids would write him. They would come by, visit the house. Um, and I think, you know, he felt a sense of comfort and being able to connect with them and then them to him as well. So um, I think it was something that gave him a lot of comfort. Yeah, and I think um, just talking to our, our mom, she didn't find out until she was in college, so in her 20s, um, which means that he had kept it kind of a secret from his kids for the first, you know, 20 years of their life. Yeah, when I spoke to the daughters, he has identical twin uh, daughters. Uh, I'm like, you know, how did he tell you? And he literally just handed him a recording of the interview. And I said, why, why do you think he kept the secret so long? And they said, I don't know. Will you ask him for us? <laughs> they felt guilty because they had such an amazing childhood. And Herbert would always say, I didn't want to upset anyone. And, and I asked the, the daughters, um, why didn't you, uh, you know, ask him yourself, and he's like, well, we didn't want to upset him. We didn't want to upset anyone. But um, the way he told him is he did, he handed him a copy, and one, one daughter watched it and one didn't. Thank you. Mine is kind of a follow-up to the previous question, and that is for the grandsons. Uh, it, what an extraordinary man your grandfather was, and you must be so proud, and he left his mark. Uh, not only with your family, but evidently with many, many people. 
now that's your legacy and his story is your story, I, my question is, how does that inform your life now? How do you anticipate that might inform your life? And what impact has that had on you? I mean, I think it's definitely a lot to live up to. Um, you know, it's admittedly not something I think about every day. Uh, but I think when I experience difficult times, um, I do think back to his story and how he was able, able to overcome that. Um, and I think it gives me a lot of strength. Uh, but I also think at the same time, you know, it's our responsibility to spread the message and make sure people are aware of the events that occurred, um, how horrific everything was, and to prevent it from ever happening again. Um, if people aren't listening and, um, you know, they're in denial that things such as that happened, um, I think history is only going to repeat itself. So, um, you know, you see what's happening in Israel right now. Um, there's a lot of conflict and, you know, there's a lot of risk that something like this does occur in the future if people don't take action. Yeah, I think it's on us just to continue to tell his story. Um, you know, I invited my friends here to the film tonight. Um, so just trying to get his story out to people that are close to me, um, you know, telling my coworkers, friends, family, um, and just hoping that his story can spread. We're going to take one last question here. Uh, so I just wanted to, it was amazing and very powerful, but also talk a little bit about the decision to bring Abby and that um, story, and the, also the, the powerfulness of storytelling in and of itself and that process and that decision. Um, when I first started on this path of getting this film done, there were many people that wanted it to be a documentary. And... I wanted the film to be seen, and I said, we need to make it a narrative. And I also want teens to watch this film, not because they're forced to in school, but because they want to see it. Um, so I felt it was important to have a teen line that they could connect with, um, you know, and hopefully through social media, we can drive a lot of young adults and te older teens to watch this film. Um, and then learn a lot about the past that they might not know, you know? <laughs> so, some, you know, a little bit is what Luke said a little <laughs> earlier was, when I go to schools and talk to kids about this film and I show them the film, I said, you are the change makers of the future. You know, we need you to push change forward um, and again, help heal the past and the present. And I. I couldn't see that happening without a teen storyline involved. And honestly, like the way that it's shot and the way that it was filmed, the connection between um, the older generation and the younger generation is wonderful. And again, at schools, one of the things I say is, you know, when I was a teen, we didn't have internet, you know? So we spent weekends with multi-generational and we heard a lot from the elders and that's not happening anymore you know, because kids are so enmeshed with their own lives. So I said, if you get a chance, go home and talk to your parents, talk to your grandparents, hear their stories. And you'll probably end up, you'll end up knowing more about your grandparents' lives than probably your parents do. <laughs> so I think it's important. And, and I'd just like to add, for me as a writer, when I took it on, what I loved about Herbert was, this incredible story and this pain, of course the pain never completely goes away, he turned it into a service and that service changed him. If you look at the interviews from the beginning to the ones we did 20 years later or 15 years later, he was a transformed person. He had triggers till the end. There are certain things that would trigger him, but he changed massively and turned uh, that pain into a gift into a service, which to me, as a writer, was what made the story unique and beautiful. Um, anyway. What's next for the film? Um, <laughs> as Todd. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would just say, as a, if you can hear me, I, I commend everyone on that stage. It's tough to make a movie these days. It's. Uh, this is a powerful movie that's gonna be seen wide theatrically. There's a lot of interest already, kind of buzzing guys, but uh, to 
undertake this challenge, guys. It's unbelievable. That's a beautiful film. Yeah. Thank so, you. So stay patient. Get ready. The next you know, time you're buying another ticket to uh, this movie. But really. All your friends to buy. Yeah. Oh, also, well if you loved the film, please go on IMDb and vote on it. And if you didn't, uh, just forget that I said that. <laughs> Um, folks, keep this conversation going, and you're welcome to do it at the, where is this, at the Art House Hotel? The library at the Art House Hotel. We're going and, there. And watch the, watch the uh, debate. debates uh, together. The Good luck to us all. Thank you all so much for being here. Have a good night.